Okay, <laughs> let's talk about uh, kinematics, which is the physics of motion. Um, so the first thing uh, we'll talk about um, is, I guess, just a general, you know, idea of what we're talking about here. Um, so before we do that, we need to we need to get some of the language down that we're going to need to use here. So we're gonna we're gonna make a, um, a differentiation between two types of measurements in physics. There's vector measurements and there are scalar measurements, and they are a little bit different. So um, let's start with scalar values first. Um, these are measurements that have only a magnitude. Okay. And um, magnitude means size. And it's measured in, it's measured with um, numerals. Okay, that'll make more sense in a little bit. Okay. Vector values are measurements which are made up of both magnitudes, a magnitude measured in some numeral and some value, and direction. They have a direction. So let's do some examples of uh, some scalar values, and then we'll get values that are vector values, and then we'll see how to use them and how they sort of differ. Um, so things that are scalar. Uh, so something like we'll we'll kind of stick with the with the motion theme first here. Um, so distance. Distance is a scalar value. Speed is scalar. Time is scalar. Oops. Mass is scalar, okay? And a few of these have sort of like vector equivalents. Um, displacement, it's kind of like distance, but it's its vector version. Uh, velocity goes over here. Um, acceleration. And force. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. These are just some examples. Okay. So to demonstrate the difference, let's talk um, about displacement first. Okay. So we'll define it, and then we'll talk about it. Um, so let's let's do distance first to get a sense of what we're talking about. So distance is essentially just ground covered. Ground covered during motion. And then displacement, a bit different in that, remember it being a vector value, has a direction attached. So it is the, um, I like to think of it as like how far and in what direction is the object. From the origin. Okay, so we'll do two examples of this, kind of make sense of it. And I think we'll start with a number line. Number lines are fairly um, useful tools in physics, especially this unit. So we'll lay it down and we'll start to mark off values on the number line. So usually, as you go to the right, you're going into positive territory on the number line, and then to the left is into negative territory. So there's nothing new. Um, from you know a normal number line that you've used all the way through one two three four five six okay so let's imagine then that our uh, point of interest our reference point is this zero okay that's our reference point we'll call this the origin 
All right, now the origin is picked by the observer, by the physicist, um, okay? And we'll see later that origins can kind of move around. And the origin is not always necessarily going to be at zero, but let's say in this case it is. So we're going to do two examples of motion. And let's say, let's say that the units we're working in is meters, okay? So this represents meters, okay? Now we're the observer, we're looking at this scenario. And we could say that, you know, a person went um, over to here. Okay, and then turned around and went back over to here. So let's mark them down. So first they were here, then they moved over to here, then they turned around and went all the way back over to here. And somehow they shrunk in the process. So the first question is, what distance was covered? What distance did this person cover? And obviously this is going to take some time, right? So there's going to be some time to go all the way over to here. And there's going to be some different time to go all the way back over to here. We'll talk about time a bit later. But just keep in mind that obviously motion takes time. You can't just move from one place to another instantly. That would be called like warping or something. It doesn't work. Um, so distance-wise, they went five, then they went five more, so that's ten, and then three more. So in distance, this person went 13 meters. Direction was irrelevant, okay? And, you know, we could actually even, like, throw in directions here, couldn't we? We could say that this was to the east, and that this is to the west, okay? Now, the second question is where it gets a little more interesting. What is this person's displacement. There's a little trick for showing what, how you find a displacement, but all we really need to say is this person is one, two, three. They're three meters out of place. And since it's a vector, we need to say a direction. Three meters west of where they started, okay? However, that being said, using the term west, you can't do math with the word west. Can you? You can't do math with the word west. However, you can do math with negative numbers, right? So another way to say this is actually just to say the displacement is negative three meters. Either of these is okay, but if you want to do math with it, you have to leave it like this, okay? So this is saying to the person observing that the person is out of place by three meters, okay, and that three meters is to the negative, okay? So notice what does not matter when I'm talking about displacement. It really is irrelevant how the person got there. All that matters is where they are measured from where they started. Okay, or from or from some reference point that's decided beforehand. Okay. So um, just something to note here is that um, scalar values will will never be negative. Will never be negative. Okay. However, oftentimes vector values will. They can be negative. They don't have to be, but they can be negative. And the key thing to understand here is what the negative means. What negatives stand for when you're talking about vectors is a stand-in for direction, right? Stand-in for direction. That's what that negative means. And it's a stand-in for direction so we can do math with these values. So it's key that you understand the difference between these two things, okay? Okay, so we'll move on a little bit. I think that's sort of straightforward. Um, when we get to velocity and speed, we'll tackle those a little more um, in depth. Um, we'll kind of go step by step here. Um, let's talk about um, changes 
in physics and how we write them. Um, okay, so we'll call this change and delta notation. And when I say delta, I mean like a triangle. Okay, so this is the Greek letter delta. Delta from the Greek alphabet. So what we'll do here is we'll um, look at position and we'll talk about change in position and how we would use delta notation to deal with that. So I'm just going to draw another number line. All right, let's quickly fire it up there. Doesn't have to be massive. Okay, and you know, this can be, I will make it kilometers this time, why not? Okay, and we'll say that like what we're doing is we're marking positions. So let's say this is considered P1, position 1. Okay, this is the initial position, or PI, let's call it. Initial position. Um, and let's say that like sometime later, this person is like over here. Call this P2. Okay. P1 and P2. So P1 equals negative 5 meters. P2 is 2 meters. That's measured from 0. Yeah, of course it's kilometers. Yeah, sorry, it's kilometers. So we're going to kind of look, think about this in two ways. Um, depending what purpose we have for looking at this, we might say that this person's displacement is two meters from zero. However, that's maybe not the best information. It doesn't really tell us a whole lot. If we want to know where a person is from some known reference point, um, we might use that. They're two meters. Their position, their displacement right now from origin is two meters. But we might want to know what their um, displacement is from their original position. And that's kind of what I'm going to focus on to, to talk about delta notation. So use delta notation to calculate displacement from PI, from initial position. If I'm doing PI, then this should, probably shouldn't be PII. It should be PF, for final position. Okay? So delta notation is this. Um, it means uh, delta D, we'll call it change in displacement, or delta P maybe, is just simply this. It's the final position or final location or final velocity, if we're talking about that, subtract the initial. Um, so we'll write that in just a general form, okay? We'll write it like this. Delta X equals X F minus X I. <laughs> so delta is a change in a value. Um, it's used exclusively with vectors and it can produce negative values. If you get a negative value, don't be thrown off. Negatives, when you're dealing with vectors, simply mean a direction, um, you know, in the negative. As defined by the, the person observing, right? The person observing this would see this way as being to the left or negative, and this way being to the right or positive. However, for someone, say, standing behind the computer screen, they would see your negative as positive and your positive as negative. So just be aware of that. It's observer-based or it's relative to the observer. We'll stop there.